Have you ever heard about Bob Lazar? Yes, the same man who sparked the worldwide curiosity and conspiracy theories surrounding Area 51, extraterrestrial technology, and the mystery Element 115. He claims to have worked on reverse engineering alien technology in a secretive base called S-4 near Area 51. But how did a supposed physicist from the Midwest end up at the heart of one of the most enduring UFO narratives of our time? And why does his story continue to fascinate us today, decades after he first brought his claims to the public? Let's delve into this cosmic conundrum together. Bob Lazar, a name that sends ripples through the world of UFO enthusiasts and skeptics alike. Born in 1959 in Coral Gables, Florida, Lazar moved to New York during his childhood. He's held a lifelong fascination with science and technology, particularly with jet engines and explosives, and his exploits even led to some minor run-ins with the law. But what truly thrust Lazar into the spotlight wasn't his penchant for pyrotechnics. It was his extraordinary claims in 1989, when he came forward in a televised interview, introducing himself to the world as a physicist and declaring that he had worked in a clandestine facility near the infamous Area 51. This location, he said, was called S4, tucked into the Emigrant Valley and sheltered by the Papoose mountain range. According to Lazar, S4 was the hub of a top-secret operation that focused on reverse engineering alien technology. He claimed to have been part of this covert program, working directly on nine extraterrestrial craft, each one with different exteriors but identical interiors. His role, he stated, was to help understand and reproduce the incredible technology that powered these vessels. This claim, as outrageous as it was, caught the public's attention. UFO enthusiasts and conspiracy theorists pounced on Lazar's story as proof of the US government's knowledge and involvement with extraterrestrial beings and their technology. But his story also drew skepticism from many others, leading to an ongoing debate about the truth of Lazar's claims, his background, and the very existence of S4. It's this controversy that continues to fog Lazar's story. S4, a location etched into the minds of UFO enthusiasts and skeptics alike thanks to Lazar. But what was the nature of the work supposedly conducted at this elusive location? Let's delve into what Lazar described as his experiences there. At S4, according to Lazar, the mission was clear yet unimaginably complex to reverse engineer advanced extraterrestrial technology. He described the alien craft as sports model flying saucers, powered by a device he referred to as the Element 115 reactor. This mysterious element, which he claimed was not of our planet, allegedly generated a gravity wave that propelled the spacecraft. His role as part of the back engineering team was to try to understand how these flying saucers worked and to explore the possibility of duplicating their technology using earthly materials and scientific understanding. It was an intricate task that demanded a fusion of physics, engineering, and a lot of conjecture. But Lazar also spoke about the intense secrecy and compartmentalization that characterized the operation. Each project team at S4 was kept in the dark about the other team's work, minimizing the risk of information leakage. Even within the team's knowledge was strictly on a need-to-know basis. Furthermore, Lazar claimed that the US government had fabricated academic and professional records to discredit him if he ever broke his oath of secrecy. Indeed, when his claims reached the public, Lazar found his background under intense scrutiny, with critics pointing to discrepancies and lack of verifiable records. But in spite of all the skepticism and controversy, the details of Lazar's account continue to captivate many who are willing to ponder the possibility of a secretive government program focused on alien technology. It's a tale that adds another layer to the intriguing tapestry of UFO lore. Bob Lazar's academic and professional credentials have been the subject of intense debate. His claim of having degrees from the California Institute of Technology, Caltech, and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, two of the most prestigious institutions in the world, was met with incredulity and skepticism. When investigators attempted to verify Lazar's educational background, they hit a wall. There were no records of Lazar having attended, let alone graduated from either of these universities. Critics argue this effectively discredits his claim of being a physicist, thus calling into question his alleged role at S4. However, Lazar claimed that his records were deliberately erased to discredit him and suppress the explosive information he disclosed. 
It's a claim that's difficult to prove, but fuels the intrigue surrounding his story. Lazar's supporters point to his undeniable scientific and technical knowledge, arguing that he couldn't have gained such understanding without substantial education. Additionally, Lazar also claimed to have previously worked at Los Alamos National Laboratory, a top-level research institution in New Mexico. Initial checks turned up no employment records, but an old phone directory did list a Robert Lazar employed by a subcontractor. Furthermore, a news article from before the controversy featured a picture of Lazar standing next to a jet car he claimed to have built, and the article referred to him as a physicist with the Los Alamos Messon Physics Facility. This tug-of-war between Lazar's claims and the verifiable evidence forms a significant part of the Lazar narrative. It's a maze of mystery, sprinkled with apparent contradictions and unanswered questions, stirring the minds of UFO enthusiasts and skeptics alike. One of the most extraordinary claims Bob Lazar made revolves around an element he referred to as Element 115, which he said was used as the fuel for the alleged extraterrestrial spacecraft at S-4. Lazar's description of this element's properties seemed fantastical at the time. He claimed it was capable of generating a gravitational field when excited and could be used for gravity propulsion. This was said to enable the craft to distort gravity around it, allowing for what would appear to us as incredible acceleration and maneuverability, not to mention facilitating travel across vast cosmic distances. He suggested that these distortions in gravity were the reason why observers often reported UFOs as making rapid direction changes and accelerating at unbelievable speeds. In the early 1990s, when Lazar first made these claims, there was no official recognition of element 115 in the periodic table. However, in 2003, scientists were able to synthetically create a super-heavy element with an atomic number of 115. Named Muscovium, it was not as stable as Lazar had claimed element 115 was, and it certainly did not exhibit the gravity-defying properties he described. Nonetheless, this development sparked renewed interest in his story. Additionally, Lazar detailed the design and functionality of the alleged alien spacecraft. He claimed they were powered by a gravity reactor, which utilized element 115 to generate a gravity A-wave. The spacecraft allegedly had three gravity amplifiers, which could focus the gravity A-wave to allow the craft to essentially fall in any direction, explaining their seemingly impossible maneuvers. The technical and detailed nature of Lazar's claims, whether fact or fiction, have undeniably captured the imagination of many and have significantly influenced the discourse around UFO technology and potential alien propulsion methods. Today, Bob Lazar's story continues to divide opinions and provoke debate, with many still questioning the truth of his assertions and the validity of his credentials. The lack of substantial, verifiable evidence has kept many skeptics unconvinced. Yet there are others who believe his account, drawn to the consistency in his narrative and the specific technological details he provided. Lazar has largely withdrawn from the public eye, but made a significant return to the spotlight with the 2018 documentary, Bob Lazar Area 51 and Flying Saucers, directed by Jeremy Corbell. In the film, Lazar stands by his claims, expressing frustration and discomfort about his unique knowledge and the ensuing disbelief he has faced. The documentary has brought his story to a new generation, sparking renewed interest and debate. Some points that have kept his narrative alive include the official acknowledgement of Area 51 by the US government in 2013, more than two decades after Lazar first brought it to public attention. Moreover, the US Navy's confirmation of several videos showing unidentified aerial phenomena performing maneuvers that appear to defy our understanding of physics has led some to speculate about the kind of technology Lazar described. In recent years, a renewed push for transparency on UFOs from certain sectors of the US government and military, culminating in the 2020 release of previously classified UFO footage, has added fuel to the discussion surrounding Lazar's claims. While none of this conclusively proves Lazar's story, for some, it suggests that the world might be closer to accepting the existence of technology and knowledge that is currently beyond our comprehension. And so, as we stare up at the night sky, pondering our place in the cosmos, the story of Bob Lazar continues to challenge our understanding of the universe and our place within it.
Despite the skeptics, despite the controversy, his tale echoes with our innate desire to explore the unknown and to comprehend the incomprehensible. So next time when you look at the stars twinkling above, ask yourself, could it be that we've already touched the cosmos in ways we can't fully understand or accept? Just a thought. And as always, thanks for watching.